Hi, Miss Seglin here. Today I'm going to review Chapter 10 of Lois Lowry's The Giver. The first question is, describe what Jonas's training may, may be like. Hint, reread pages 62 to 66. Okay, so I'm going to scroll back to 62, and again, I'm going to scan. And this is when the chief elder is telling Jonas about his job. And again, this part, Jonas, the training required of you involves pain, physical pain. You have never experienced that before. And, you know, she goes on, but you will be faced now with pain of a magnitude that none of us here can comprehend because it is beyond our experience. The receiver himself was not able to describe it, only to remind us that you would be faced with it and that you would need immense courage. We cannot prepare you for that, but we feel certain you are brave. Okay, so... And she talks about he's going to need wisdom and then, you know, the capacity beyond. So this job just becomes more and more mysterious and, you know, then he finds out the previous receiver fails. Um, we basically do not know what this job is going to be. And we don't know what his training is going to be, but we're just kind of um, in suspense because it, it sounds very, very bizarre and kind of horrible. Two, what happened in chapter 10, and I'm going to capitalize this because one of the words with the number is capitalized, chapter 10, that astonished Jonas. Why was this shocking to him? So again, when I'm going back into the chapter, I'm going to make sure I'm on the right chapter, and this is when Jonas, um, he's talking to Fiona, and then he's ready to report for his first training. He is shocked that the doors lock. Okay, but is he astonished? No. Let's find out what astonishes Jonas. So he's meeting with the current receiver. And I'm looking for the word astonish because that is in quotes. So I know that's directly from the text. And I have found it. Okay, so the man is talking about going downhill on runners. And, you know, Jonas is like, I don't know what you're talking about. And then the giver or the current receiver goes, well, it's a place to start. Um, Jonas did so. So he's on the bed. And then he watched as the man rose and moved first to the wall where the speaker was. It was the same sort of speaker that occupied a place in every dwelling. But one thing about it was different. This one had a switch where the man deftly snapped which the man deftly snapped to the end that set off. Jonas almost gasped aloud to have the power to turn the speaker off. It was an astonishing thing. So why is it astonishing? Well, no one else has ever been able to do it in the community. Just this guy. So he's like, I did not know that was possible. And, you know, to have this power is amazing. So then the last question is, what is the old receiver of memory going to do to Jonas? Okay, we really don't know, but he says... I'm going to transmit the memory of snow. And then he puts his hands on Jonas's bare back. So when you're transmitting somebody, you're giving somebody something. So how he's going to give him a memory, we don't know. And, and it's a little confusing and leaves us in suspense. Now let's go to the journal activity. The prompt is, Jonas finds several things unusual about the receiver's dwelling. The analysis is what is elsewhere. Why do you think Jonas doesn't know what snow or a sled or downhill means? Okay, this is you making an inference because you don't know. Use what you have in the text and put something together. Okay, so I put, we, we really don't know where elsewhere is. I think that Jonas doesn't know about those things. He's never experienced them. For example, Jonas has never seen so many books before. Okay, so the quote is, the books in his own dwelling were the only books that Jonas had ever seen. He had never known that other books existed. And I used an ellipsis here because I, I wanted to leave out everything that was not pertinent to supporting my my answer here. He couldn't imagine what the thousands of pages contained. Okay, he has no idea. That's very unusual in the community. And actually, this guy's the only person who has books other than the rule book and the other book they have. Okay, so vocabulary for chapter 10. If something's upholstered, there's like a heavy fabric over it. Um, and they're talking about the bed has like a thicker blanket that might be you know like embroidered or something on it 
Um, if something's conspicuous, it's like pretty obvious sympathy is when you feel, you know, really kind of badly for somebody to diminish is to go down. Um, generations would be the people who came before and then they're talking about the citizen in training. This would be like what Fiona Asher and Jonas, um, a 12 year old child who's learning to do their job and they talk about the bikes, you know, when they, um, the day after the ceremony of 12 or that night, their bike plates, their like little license plate with their name was switched to indicate that they were citizens in training. So if you understood this chapter, you're ready to move on to chapter 11. If you don't, um, reread. That's what good readers do. When we don't understand, we go back and reread or we will ask questions. So email me a question or put uh, your question in the comments below. And as always, um, if you like this video, subscribe to my channel for updates and hit the thumbs up. Thank you.